great. Okay, so Forex basics training. Let's start. Um, I'll take questions at the end, um, unless something has to do with the slide, just because I know that this training is very thorough, so it probably is gonna touch on any questions you might have midway. Okay, so margin levels and account balance, we're gonna start with this. If you can see, most of my slides have which app goes with what. Uh, feel free to download them. They're not all really um, important, but some it's kind of like helpful. Okay, so margin levels and account balance, I want everyone to open up their MetaTrader 4 app and go to their running trade screen. All right, so I'm gonna do this with you all. And you're gonna see we have quotes, chart, trade, history, settings. We are gonna focus on the trade screen. If you look, you have balance, equity, margin, free margin, margin level. You're gonna look at margin level percent, and that's what we're gonna focus on. This is gonna determine how much you are leveraging, if you're over leveraging your account, if your account is about to blow out, all of that stuff. This margin level percent, you never want it to go under 100%. If you read my slide here, if it goes too slow, I'm sorry, too low, the broker will take out your order orders starting with the one with the most negative amount. So let's say you have $100 in your account and you have a trade running at negative 50, another one running at negative $20 and another one running at negative $10. So you are down $80. So the broker it's gonna be kind of mean, and it's gonna take out your most negative order first. So the one that's negative 50 is gonna take it out first. It's gonna leave you with $50, and you're gonna have uh, <laughs> negative 30 running. So you really just have $20 to play with at this point. So you wanna make sure that you're being really consistent and you're not trading like someone who has an account that you don't have, okay? So if you have $50, you want to trade like someone who has $50 and not like someone who has $5,000. Um, typically, we start with $50 to $100, completely fine. We've had many people on the team grow their accounts, so we use the compound effect. Um, so every day we are compounding our account, and it's growing even more. The more money you have in your account, the more money that you're going to be able to make. So just because at first you're making $2, it's okay because those $2 next month are going to turn into $20. Um, make sure when you're taking signals as a new person that you're focusing on one signal provider. I'm going to repeat that again. One signal provider. Um, as you can see, you have access to trade with Gustavo signals, you have drip and pip signals, you have millionaire millennial signals, um, many other signals. When you are trading on your real account with your real money, you wanna to stick to only one signal provider. Um, just because all of them are not taking each other into account. And I guarantee you, if you take all signals from one signal provider, you will always end up in profit. Okay, cool. Next, what are pips and lot sizes? I'm pretty sure, or I'm not even pretty sure. I know that this is covered in the basics videos. I forgot to mention, if you are on this call, you must have watched all the basics videos um, because I will not be covering any of the stuff that's already covered in those, in those um, videos. So, okay, a pip is, is usually the third and fourth number um, after the decimal. Cool, I'm gonna actually, actually show y'all how to calculate pips today. Okay, lot sizes, let's focus on this just so we can see. Okay, let's start piecing things together. What is the proper lot size that you are supposed to use? I'll show you in a second. So let's start. If you are trading and you want to make $10 per pip, you would be trading at a 1.00 lot size. Now, it is not wise if you have a small account to trade at this lot size. You probably need at least like I don't know, $10,000 to trade with this lot size because it's really high. A pip is like a step. If you're moving 10 steps in the positive direction, you are moving 10 pips in the positive direction. So if you are trading and you are gaining $10 per pip, if you take 10 steps, you automatically make $100. But just as well as you, just as you can make $100 with 10 steps, you can also lose $100 with 10 steps backwards. So if you notice, when you put in a trade into your phone, you automatically go negative. And that's because that is the broker taking its little commission. It's called a spread, okay? Um, 
And so that spread usually is a minimum of like five pips. That's already $50 if you were trading at a 1.00 lot size. That's not wise at all, basically. Okay, now we have the mini lot size. $1 per pip, okay, that's a little more reasonable. 0 0.10 lot size. So that's what that equals. As you notice here, we're always moving the decimal over. So $1 per pip, that would require you to make 100 steps backwards to blow out your account because $1 times 100 is $100. So that gives you a little more flexibility. The last one, the lowest, um, what is it? The lowest risk um, is a 0 0.01. You know, that one's not really bad, but me as someone who has been trading for a while, I would say even if you're new, you know, even using a 0 0.02 lot size makes so much more of a difference. 0 0.01, you're just going to be making like maybe a dollar or two dollars. But don't get discouraged because if you made two dollars at a 0 0.01 lot size, that means you caught 20 pips. And that is really good. Okay, I'm going to calm down for a second because I know I talk fast and I'm going to join through my iPad because I want to be able to sh share my iPad screen to show you all how exactly to trade at what lot size according to your account. So hold on. Okay, here I am. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share my iPad. All right, so hopefully you all can see my iPad. Actually, I know you all can because I'm looking at it. Okay, so lot sizes. Basically the rule of thumb, at least here in Millionaire Millennials, for every $10, risk no more than a zero, 0.01 lot size. Okay, that makes a Can lot of sense. That? I'm sorry? Can you repeat that please? Yeah, so for every $10 in your account, you're risking no more than a 0 0.01 lot size. I'm sorry for my handwriting, oh my gosh, I promise. <laughs> okay, so what this means is, let's say you have $100, because most of us start with $100. Right, so $100 means you are risking no more than how much? 0 0.10, because 0 0.01 times 10 equals 0 0.10, okay? So for every $10, you're risking no more than 0 0.01. This means, okay, pay attention. You can do one trade at 0 0.10. Okay, so you are you have one trade running at 0 0.10. You can have two trades running at 0 0.05. Do you get this? Okay, because Two times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.10. Okay, where I'm getting this two from is from right here. You can have, let's say, three trades at 0 0.03, and then one trade at 0 0.01, oops, sorry. Okay, because if you look, 0 0.03 plus 0 0.01, sorry. We have three, three trades running at 0 0.03, which is 0 0.09 plus 0 0.01 equals 0 0.10. Kind of just wanted to draw it out for you. Basically what I'm saying, for $100, all of your trades should not exceed 0 0.10, okay? Now this means if you have three trades running and another signal comes out, well, you might wanna wait for one to finish running 
before you put in another one. I'm just helping you all to not over leverage, okay? Because if you do blow out your account and you, you know, tell me, hey, Rika, I blew up my account, I am gonna ask you for your history screen and see if you were over leveraging your account. Um, you can do five trades at, oops, 0 0.02 because five times 0 0.02 equals 0 0.10. So pop quiz, if I have $200 in my account, what's the highest lot size in sum that I'm going to be trading at for $200? Well, um, 0 0.20. Yes, woo, okay, good. I know this is very simple, but I promise sometimes people don't get it. But thank you for whoever is participating. Okay, cool. So I'll come back to this if anyone has any questions about it at the end. Um, but for now, I'm going to proceed back to my slide. Okay. All right. So. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that I added this slide last time. So, yeah. If you want to take a screenshot of this, be my guest. If you want to take a screenshot of any of this. Okay, cool. Okay, next slide. How to calculate total in pips. I'm gonna show you how to calculate pips through the automatically on the computer and on your phone and by hand. This is how you calculate pips by hand, okay? So if we're kind of looking, here we have a signal, okay? We're buy, stop, GBP, JPY. In a signal, you're always given the entry, stop, loss, and take profit, okay? So what we're going to do, depending on if you're calculating your stop loss or take profit, you're subtracting one from the other, you're converting it into uh, pips. So since the last digit, you always want to drop it because it's like the pipette, right? Um, we're going to convert this to pips, and then your lot size, you're going to turn that into the monetary value. So we all know that 0 0.20 means... Um, I'm sorry, 0 0.02 means 20 cents per pip. So 20 cents times 36 pips is $7.20. Now, if this is something that's completely confusing you, just stop listening and wait for the next slide because I promise you, you're probably never gonna do this by hand. We don't expect anyone to wake up in the middle of the night and calculate pips by hand. An app that can help you is called MyFXBook, okay? And that's gonna help you calculate pips. You can also Google what else. Okay, one thing I do want to touch on with signals. Uh, actually, I'll do that after. Okay, so importance, importance of watching basics. Obviously, if you're on this call, I assume you've watched all of basics. Okay. Oh, no, I woke up late. Can I still put in a trade, right? So right now, I'm going to teach you guys what a lot of y'all are in here for. Usually, what I tell people when they're new is if a signal comes out, and it's been more than an hour, just wait for the next signal. But today I'm gonna to teach you all how to actually determine is it too late to put in a signal. This signal is from two years ago, so it's probably not valid anymore. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys through TradingView. So the website that we use to trade is called TradingView. Um, that's what like all IML educators use, okay? Um, it's kind of like looking at your chart, but on the computer. So I'm gonna do, let's see what signals came out today. Um, we're gonna do uh, GBP, JPY. I'm gonna click full featured chart. Okay, so here, I'm gonna show y'all a lot today, okay? So if you're taking notes, Pay attention. So here, as soon as you type in GBP, JPY, you have a naked chart. I like for my candles going down to be red and my candles going up to be green. I'm also gonna show you all how to change the candle colors in the MetaTrader 4 app. Now here, we have different time frames. I know y'all probably thinking, what does that even mean? Right now, we are on the one hour time frame. That means every single candle represents one hour. Right now it is 9.18 p.m. When it is 10 p.m., 
this candle will close and another one will print okay so every time you're going up it's like you're zooming out so now i'm going to go to the four hour chart which is another common one the four hour means every candle represents four hours here okay and depending on what type of trader you are which i will touch on later that's how you'll determine what chart you're looking at so let's look at a signal that was sent out this morning or last night i don't even remember but i'm looking at millionaire millennial signals gbp jpy so we we're doing buy gbp jpy by market i'm actually going to type the signal out for everyone so i want y'all to see okay what exactly how do y'all come up with these signals sl 132.30 tp1 And I'm just going to leave it at three TP3. There's four, but I'll just focus on these. Um, usually we give an entry price. I guess I was too busy last night to do that, but let me do that for you all now. So this was sent out at 8.17. So... Give me one second. Okay, so this was sent out at around right here. I'm gonna draw a line. Okay, don't pay attention to this right now. I'm just, this is a mental note for myself. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in so I can better show you all. So here's where we said, hey, everyone, buy GPB, GBP, JPY. Um, where did my signal go? Oh, here it is. So my entry price is going to be this blue line, 132.768. I promise I'm going to explain what I'm doing in a second. 132.768. Okay, so you're always given the entry price, stop loss, take profit. Entry price is where you get in. So we're looking at this green box right now. It's around this green candle right here. This morning is when we said get in for the buy. So we all got in. If we are doing a buy, that means we're expecting price to rise up, which is exactly what it did. If we are expecting to sell, we're expecting price to go down, which is not what it did, right? So price went up. Um, so I'm gonna delete this arrow. Um, so of course, if you want price to go up, your take profits are going to be up and your stop loss is gonna be in the opposite direction. So now let me mark my stop loss for you all. So we have 132.30. I'm going to bring a, another horizontal line. 132.30. This is our stop loss down here, and I'm going to make it red to represent danger. You know what I'm saying? Okay, this is our stop loss. And then since we're expecting price to go up, all our take profits are going to be in the opposite direction of our stop loss. They're going to be up. I'm going to delete this little arrow now because it's getting my nerves. Okay. So take profit one is going to be 133.10. We always like to make take profit one, uh, you know, pretty close just because um, we like to make sure that TP1 is at least almost certainly hit. And then, you know, that kind of looks kind of far. <laughs> um, and then 133.30 is take profit two. So as you can see here, uh, let me change the colors of these, by the way. Hold on. I'm going to make these green. 
and then take profit three, one, three, three, point five, zero. Boom. So as you guys can see here, this right here is take profit one. It's closer to the entry price. This is take profit two. It's the second closest to the entry price. Take profit three is the furthest from the entry price. So when you're on your app and you're like, oh, I see they sent out three take profits, you almost certainly always want to go for take profit one. If you're feeling risky, you can also go in for take profit two or take profit three. Now pay attention if you're taking notes. When there is multiple take profits, you want to get into them all at the same time. Okay, that means you're going to do three orders, same stop loss, but different take profits. Okay, and what it's going to look like is this. Boom, take profit one is going to be hit here. Boom, take profit two. You're going to have an order that's going to hit take profit two. And then you're going to have an order that hits take profit three. A lot of people, I don't know why, but they have the misconception that it's going to do something like this. Take profit one is hit. Oh, man, take profit one was hit. Let me now go in for take profit two. And then for some reason, then they go ahead and put in an order for take profit two. Oh, take profit two was hit. Now let me get in for take profit three. That is not how you do this, okay? Because entry is key. All of these you got in at the same exact time, therefore you are maximizing your profits. Entry point is totally key, okay? Don't do this. Okay, cool. So when a signal comes out, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, if you want to kind of start practicing, like, oh, I want to see what, I'm, what the expert is looking at, you can definitely go on tradingview.com or go on MetaTrader, MetaTrader 4 and place the lines where they have marked up so you can see, oh, I see what they see. Okay, that is why, you know, we're taking profit here or there or whatever. Okay. So how do you determine if it's too late to get into a trade? Well, usually, and I'm gonna do better at doing this tonight, I'm sorry. Usually, like 90% of, of the time, we give you an entry price. So my entry price was 132.768, which is this blue line. So what you'll do is you put the entry price into the app or into your chart. You can put a little line there. And I'll show y'all towards the end of the call how to do this on the phone. So for trading view, oops, I don't know what I did. For trading view, you go here, grab the horizontal line, double click, put in the entry price. One, hey, Rachel, I have a question. Yes. So for the take profits, all three of those, are those just bases? Or like we have to put them in as you have them written there. So could I put in like 133.20 and then 133.35, then 133.55, or you advise mm -hmm. that we put them in exactly how it's written there? Um, if you know how to like read the chart and you want to put it in like, like you're saying like, oh, I want to put it here instead. I mean, that's totally fine. Just as long as you're putting it in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not you don't want to put take profit down here you always want to put it above if you're buying and below if you're selling i see a lot of questions are coming in let me just read the chat real quick um okay for brokers and all of that i'll answer that question on the end but please refer to the millionaire millennials welcome letter where where i have highlighted the broker that we recommend okay so Literally what you're doing is you're looking at a signal entry price. Another good thing to do is when the signals come out, we, the, the app specifies what time the signal comes out at. If I'm telling you that every candle represents one hour, what you wanna do is, okay, I see that it's 9.28 p.m. This signal came out 12 hours ago because it came out at 9 a.m. I'm gonna count back 12 candles and see if it's anywhere near the entry price. If, okay, if price is <clears throat> very far from the entry price, don't get in. Unfortunately, you missed your entry, wait for the next signal, okay? Um, now, I know that some signals come out overnight, 
And we're not saying that you have to take the signals overnight, but in order to maximize all your profits, you do want to take every signal. So I do want to tell y'all that what I do, what I've always done since I started trading is put an alarm for 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. The reason why I say 3 a.m. is because that is the start of the London session. I'm actually going to cover it in another slide right now. Okay, so cool. If you have any more questions about how to, you know, determine if it's too late to get into a trade, I will answer or go over it more at the end of this call. One thing I want to touch on now that I'm here is how do you calculate pips on TradingView or on your phone? Perfect. So if you look at the trading, I'm sorry, at the toolbar right here to the left side, you, you are going to see this ruler. This actually measures pips. So I'm gonna take it from my entry price to my take profit one to show y'all how many pips we caught. Okay, so if you look right here, you're given 33.1. You're always gonna drop the number after the decimal count that is like your pipette. We caught 33 pips. If you think back to what we were just doing with, okay, you, you're catching 33 pips, so how much money are you making? A lot of people like to ask, how much money did you make? It depends on everyone, you know, it's situational. What lot size are you using? What lot size are they using? So let's say we're gonna do a 0 0.05 lot size. So 0 0.05 lot size means you're making 50 cents per pip. And I'm gonna try to slow down because I want y'all to really comprehend this. 0 0.05 lot size, 50 cents per pip. So I'm gonna do 50 cents times 33 pips. If you would have gotten in this trade for take profit one at a 0 0.05 lot size, you would have made $16. Okay, now let's keep going. All right, take profit one wasn't enough. How much, how many pips is take profit two? You're gonna drag this up to take profit two. Okay, oops, 52.8, drop the pipette, 52 pips. Okay, do the same thing again. 50 cents times 52 pips, that's $26. So you caught $16 on one trade, $26 on the next trade, now you have collectively made $42. This is still the same signal, just different take profits. Okay. Take profit three, grab your ruler from the entry price up to the take profit three, 72 pips. Ooh, okay, 50 cents times 72, $36. You would have made at like around 70 to $80 on this signal at a 0 0.05 lot size. That is actually a very conservative lot size, pretty cool. And the last thing I'll show y'all is how to calculate the stop loss. I always like to drag from down up. So I'm gonna drag from, from the stop loss to my entry, which is 47.5, so 47 pips. So you are risking $23 to make 70 to $80, which is not totally bad, okay? And that's why entry is key. Okay, let me continue with my little PowerPoint and then I'll, I'll come back to this. All right. So it's very important to know what type of trader you are um, because this is for when you start trading on your own. This is not for signals, okay? If you are taking signals, you better just follow everything they're saying because it doesn't matter what type of trader you are, you wanna make your money. Okay, what type of trader you are? A scalper is someone who looks at the one minute to the 30 minute charts, they're in and out of trades, uh, their, their anxiety is big, and you know they don't like to write out trades or hold them for long. The next is the day trader. Um, these are typical, okay? Most of our signals are day trades. We hold them, and this is kind of wrong, we hold them from four hours to 24 hours, okay? It can be a little longer, maybe a day or two, but you know, within a few days, they're done. The swing trader, we're looking at four hour to the daily chart. We can hold trades for hours to days to maybe a few weeks. Now the position trader, those people hold their trades for a long time, like weeks to months, okay? Um, so this is important to know when you start trading on your own. For me personally, I'm more of a day swing trader. I like to catch those really good entries and write them out for a while. 
Okay, market time zones and sessions. Um, this is one of my favorite parts because I know what this is what's crossing a lot of people's mind. Like, okay, what is my schedule gonna be like? When should I trade? Well, let's look at the four types of trading sessions that there are. We have Tokyo, London, New York, and Sydney. And you are given the times for a reason. So I'm right now, I'm in the Eastern Standard Time. So if you are, you know, okay, let's follow along. The Asian session opens from 7 p.m. until 4 a.m. That's when the market is the most volatile and when you want to trade in that session because you're gonna make money. If you go and start and try to trade the Asian session, or I'm sorry, the Asian pairs at like, I don't know, um, 5 p.m., it's gonna be super slow and it's not even gonna be worth it. So you definitely wanna make sure, you know, JV, J, sorry, JPY pairs, you're kind of focusing on them from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. I repeat, this is for when you're trading on your own, when you're starting to mark up your own pairs, all that. The next is the European session, 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, these are all the euros, the GBPs, USD, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, all the USD pairs, and then the AUDs. As you can see here, we have the major currency pairs that uh, we recommend to trade. When you are choosing a, a pair that you wanna trade, have it have it include at least one of these. USD, Euro, GBP, AUD, JPY. The CHF, the NZD, all those other ones, they're just gonna be a little slower. One thing I do wanna cover as well now that we're here, I know when you're new, it can get a little like intriguing to start trading cryptos, indices. Um, what else is there? There's just so much, commodities. That is fine, but I don't recommend it. No, no one experienced recommends you to start with anything like US 30 or uh, NAS 100. Don't do that. Stick to a regular Forex pair when you are new, and then as your trading techniques evolve, then you can go and move on into indices and all that stuff, okay? All right, so let's see. Um, let's say you work a nine to five and you can't have your phone at work. So you are not gonna trade the US session, the New York session, because why would you? You're at work. So you're probably gonna, you know, try to trade the Tokyo session. Drive home from work, get to work, I'm sorry, get home, 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. This doesn't mean you have to trade from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. It just means that from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. you should be looking for your setups and putting in your trades. If you work a, you know, a, a, as a server, you get off work at 1 a.m. and you want to trade after work or something, okay, do the London session, 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. Now, remember I said for signals, if you want to take the overnight signals, put your alarm on for 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. because the London breakout is very real. When the London market opens at 3 a.m., that's when the euros and the GBPs are very volatile. They will make you a lot of money. If I were to tell you that at 3 a.m. you'd be making $100, would you care to wake up? Probably. So, you know, set your alarm. But, you know, if you have kids or you just can't, that's totally fine. That's why it is a 24-hour market. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, go ahead. I'll, yeah, I'll sorry for interrupting you on all that stuff. I know you said if you want to wait for questions, but this question I know I'm going to get. So, yeah. uh, say I get off work at, like, Let's say uh, one o'clock or two o'clock. Mm -hmm. You recommend? I know mean, you said this is for people who are trading on their own. Would you recommend for somebody who gets off at like one or two o'clock to maybe hop in the New York session for the last three hours, or should just wait for the uh, Tokyo session? To work? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's because the New York session would still be open by then, I'm sure there there will be you know still some movement in the market. It wouldn't hurt for you to you know, still trade in the U.S. session. Literally, when 5 p.m. hits, like, the thing about this market is, like, if you literally monitor it, 5 p.m., it just gets weird, and it stops, and it um, gets really slow. The spread gets high. Um, so, yeah, if, if you get off work at 1 or 2, definitely going for the U.S. session, then you still have time to get in for the Tokyo session later. 
Um, my favorite session and most uh, experts is the overlap between the Europe session, sorry, the European session and the United States session, or sorry, the New York session, um, which is 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. Both of these sessions are overlapping and it is a great time to trade that's actually my favorite time to trade 8 a.m to 12 p.m if you notice i think uh, a lot of the signals that came out today were from the overlap of the new york and the london session okay um i'm almost done i'm gonna switch it over to my phone now and i'm gonna show you all how to mark up things on your phone also how to do stuff like put your stop loss in profit, put your stop loss at entry, all of that stuff. So give me one second while I log in through my phone. Hopefully you guys have gotten a lot of value out of this. Give me one moment. All right. Hey Raquel. Yes. Uh, can, on the app, could you also show me and maybe everyone else on how to make uh three trades on one? Because you know how you said. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. okay so. <clears throat> don't judge my song. Okay. So here we have the MetaTrader Four app. I have this running trade screen for you all to show y'all. Okay. Let's start with quotes. Of course, here you have all your pairs. Okay, trade. Um, yeah, that was pointless. Okay, let's put our stop loss at break even or stop loss at entry on this gold cell. If you know what gold is, it is XAUUSD. When you hear someone in the chat say gold, it's this. So if you see every trade running here, it has a number directly under it. This one, it's 117.780. This one, it's 1518.21. That number is your entry point. So we can all have different entry points. Of course, we're not all gonna get exactly at the same number, but relatively around the same number we will get in. So here, we wanna put this gold trade um, stop loss at break even so that we don't lose any money. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swipe this to the left and I'm gonna click the pencil. Of course, you're gonna remember 1518.21. I'm gonna click the pencil and on stop loss, I'm gonna put my entry point, 1518.21. And I'm gonna click modify. Question, is this where we can also adjust the PIP set? So you see how, Yes. Our JPY has 0.11. Yes. For the gold, you can adjust the pip. Can you show us that as well? I am. Yes. Okay. So here we have put our stop loss at break even at entry. If price goes back to hit our entry point, we don't make any money, but we also don't lose any money. But you see here that 600. Yeah, I know. I said, don't judge me for my song. Okay. Here we are making $621.53. Um, let's say we wanna take partial profit. Um, $620, that is more than enough for me. I wanna withdraw half of this. So what you're gonna do, and this is your question, whoever just asked that question, this is the, an the answer. You're gonna swipe this to the left and you're gonna click the check mark. Now, what you can do is bag partial profits. You can decrease your lot size. You can't increase your lot size. I mean, that's kind of, right, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, it's not gonna make you make more money or let you make more money, but you can always decrease your lot size. So like I said, you can't increase the lot size, but let's decrease the lot size. We're running it at 0 0.13. I wanna take uh, 0 0.7. So I'm going to close 0 0.07 of this, okay? Hold on. Okay. 
I'm going to close out about half of this. So it says close with profit 332.64. Cool. Close. Now I have half of it still running here, 0 0.06, and I already closed 0 0.07 of it. Okay, that's how you take partial profit. All right, now what I want everyone to do is to click settings and then go to charts. Then you're gonna go and you're gonna turn this on, ask price line and trade levels, okay? I'm gonna show you why. The cool thing is, remember when I was showing you earlier, okay, how do you determine if it's too late to get into a signal? So you click edit first and then adjust that by closing however many pips you want, yeah. And I can show you again. Okay, so we're gonna go here um to xau usd sell and click on chart now do you guys see i'm gonna use my little cursor right here this dotted line right here it's red and this line right here it's purple um these lines are telling me where i got in okay so um whenever you're kind of uh like okay um, how far am I from my stop loss? You can see. Okay, I got in up here and I already put my stop loss at entry. Okay, as you can see here, it's all overlapping. Prices now moved so much, it's all the way down here. So I want to now put my stop loss in a profit. Because price is down here and I got in all the way up here, I'm going to put my stop loss in profit. So I'm going to drag this down to this yellow line. I'm going to now put my stop loss to this yellow line, which is 1484.74. So I'm going to go back to my trade and I'm going to modify my stop loss to 1484.74. And the reason why I show y'all this and so you can see how cool it is to have these dotted lines. And let me erase these um, other colorful lines so they don't kind of like cloud y'all. So that's the cool thing about the ask price line and trade levels to have all of that on. It shows you, okay, where's your sell at? Where's your stop loss at? And let's add a take profit. Let's say I want take profit to be 1463.85. I'm going to go here, modify, pencil, 1463.85 modify. Now look, my take profit is all the way down here. Price is currently here. My stop loss is here. And my entry is all the way up here. Hopefully this isn't too overwhelming or too confusing. Okay, I do have a video that explains all of this on YouTube. All right, so that's how you modify your stop loss, your take profit, take partial profits, all that good stuff. Keep in mind, you can only do this with trades that are in profit. It doesn't make sense to do this with a trade that's in negative. If a trade's in negative and you don't like it, um, well then close it out. A tip, when you are taking signals, you are putting your take profit and a stop loss in for a reason. Do not sit on your app all day babysitting your trade, okay? Um, let trades write out. A lot of people like to send me their screenshots and they're like, oh, I lost $10. And I'm like, well, did you let the trade write out? And you can clearly see that they closed it out. Just because a trade goes negative doesn't mean that it's going to go negative forever. It's probably going to come back. You just have to be patient. Okay. Um, and then someone said, could you drop your YouTube channel link? Um, yeah, it is in the welcome document. Um, there is a video that I reference in the welcome letter uh, that shows you how to put in trades. If you simply click on the profile um, icon in that video, that is the link to our YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you, Mydena. But I will drop it here after. Okay. I have a question. Yes. You probably have mentioned it. Um, what does a charge represent when you click oh. on the... Um yeah, I haven't mentioned that, but good question. So the swap taxes and charges, um, you're always going to get a swap fee and a charge fee. Swap fee, every day at 5 p.m. Eastern, is a new trading day. 
That's why the market opens at 5 p.m. on Sundays. At 5 p.m. on Monday is a new day. 5 p.m. on Tuesday is a new day. Every day that you have your trade running, um, it's called a, um, sorry, my phone. Um, it's going to charge you a swap fee. So it's a little fee just for having it run through the next trading day, basically, okay? Um, that's a swap fee. And then your charges, your charges is what your broker is charging you for commission. Now look at this. Um, I was making around 600 almost $700, and all I got charged, so for half of it, I got charged $3.27 plus $0.35, cents, uh, probably $3.60 around there. I got charged $3.60 for making $332.71. That's literally nothing. <laughs> That's 1%. And here as well, um, I'm losing $2.00. $3.10 to make $285.78. The swap fee and the charge fee always goes according to how big your lot size is. Okay, so if you're, the higher the lot size, the more you're getting charged. But if you're looking at this, I'm literally showing you a real life example. You're really getting charged like barely anything. Um, last thing I want to touch on before I take questions is how to change the candles and all of that. You're gonna to go to charts, then you're gonna to go to colors. And here you're gonna see bar up, bar down. For me personally, I like my up candles to be green and my down candles to be red. Green, buy, red, sell. Now a synonym for up is bull candle. I don't know who came up with this terminology, but just know that it's prevalent with trading, okay? Bull candle means it's going up, so we wanna make that green. And then bear candle means it's going done, down, sorry, bar down. Um, so I want to make it red. And apparently it's because bears, when they fight, they go down. And then bulls, when they fight, they kind of like put their heads up. So that's why that was came, that, that's how that came to be. Um, last thing, how to add all these lines, which is very helpful. You're going to click these little symbols here at the top. And here you have different objects. I'm gonna use the line, which is the first one. I'll place it anywhere. And I can hold it down. Properties, I can change the color, I can change the point, all of that stuff. So definitely play around with your MetaTrader 4 app. Pretty cool. I like how colorful it is. I like my candles to be re uh, green and red. With all that being said, I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna stop recording so that I can take all of your, your questions and I hope you learned something from this today.